danger on the dance floor. <laughs> but I didn't know that. The first time I stepped into Ashkenaz, a building not unlike this one, <laughs> with a peaked wooden roof and a polished wooden floor, all I saw was ecstasy. Couples of all ages and sizes and ethnicities whirling in each other's arms in a swirl of skirts, in a skirl of violin, and I thought, I want that. <laughs> well, the good news about Cajun dancing is if you're a follower, you don't have to know anything. Put up your arms, turn off your brain, move your feet to the rhythm, and someone will pilot you around the floor. <laughs> I danced in quick succession with a number of very powerful leaders. First there was Squirrel Man. me up like a lariat and began to spin me and twirl me and dislocate my shoulder and put it right back in the socket before the music ended. <laughs> it is a simple social contract. One person is the leader and he, usually, is in charge. He decides where to move. He decides how to move. He decides how to not crash into anybody else on the dance floor. And it only lasts three minutes. Not bad. The other person is the follower, and mostly she turns her brain off and moves around the floor in temporary submission, complete. <laughs> but I was hooked fast. And it was partly because in the midst of the crowd and the whirl of the dancers, every once in a while I caught a glimpse of a young man dressed all in blue with his cowboy hat pulled low pointy little blonde beard, a glint in his blue eyes, well-worn cowboy boots. And every time I saw him, he was dancing with someone new. And it didn't matter who. It could have been an older Creole woman with some glitter jeans on, or a newcomer to the dance floor in a peasant skirt and Birkenstocks. Whoever he had in his arms had a smile of bliss on her face and was dancing better than she had ever danced with anyone else. I thought, well, cute little satyr. You know, one of those bearded goat men who follow Dionysus, <laughs> plying the women with wine and grapes until they're drunk enough to take advantage of. At first. But then I noticed that this Jack, that was his name, he always went home alone. He was there to dance. And so I started thinking of him more like the Hindu god Krishna. <laughs> now they say that Krishna had a hundred gopis, a hundred cow maidens, each of whom thought he was their only lover and their most perfect partner. Each of them dreamed of him and dreamed of divine union with the Lord Krishna and each thought she was his only one. Krishna danced from one to the next to the next, and each of them waited for that moment, as I waited for that moment, when out of the crowd he might extend his hand and ask me to dance. Now there's a poem that says that Krishna's chief consort, his deepest love, Radha, waited for Krishna. She waited hopefully. She waited patiently. She waited prayerfully. She waited angrily. <laughs> she waited jealously. And at last she decided to prepare herself for the God. She adorned herself. She perfumed herself. She bedecked herself with jewels. 
and she went out into the garden to pick fresh flowers for his shrine. And as she reached out to the bush where that sweet flower blossomed, from out of the green leaves came Krishna's hand, and he drew her to him at the moment she least expected and most longed for. And they danced. And that is what happened as I stood hopefully patiently, angrily, at the edge of the dance floor, finally, from between two bodies, came a hand, Jack. And he drew me with him onto the dance floor, and when we began to dance, it was as if all effort had been erased. He held me close, but not too close. He spun me fast, but not enough to make me dizzy or lose my balance. And it felt as if a great pillar of energy rose up from the center of the earth, embraced us, and traveled with us around the dance floor. It was ecstasy. It was the thing I had dreamed of. It was over. <laughs> <laughs> and Jack bowed graciously and moved on to the next dance partner. Because, you know, in the Cajun dance scene, you can dance once with anyone. If you have a good time, you might dance twice. But if you dance three times, that is danger. Well, Jack moved off into the crowd, and I saw that at the end of every dance, no sooner had the music stopped than a hand would appear on his shoulder, a woman's hand, someone who had waited ardently for that <laughs> moment, that chance, to be at one with their Krishna. I guess something happened after that dance, something loosened inside me, but it made me open to the snake. <laughs> now the snake had earned his reputation through the smoothness of his moves, the polish of his line, the finesse with which he would place each hand on a different part of a different woman's body in just a slightly inappropriate place, <laughs> and pilot her around the dance floor murmuring seductions in her ear. A friend of mine said, he's an amazing dancer. If only I could duct tape his mouth shut. <laughs> well, the snake asked me to dance and it was a slow waltz and he was a smooth dancer. And he whispered in my ear, he said, darling, you know they say, Dancing is the vertical expression of a horizontal desire. <laughs> and I thought, where's my duct tape? <laughs> I was immune until the music shifted to a slow blues. They call it a belt buckle polisher. And I was lost. No more waiting by the side of the dance floor, wondering who would spin me away. The snake and I were a steady item for a month or two. But it ended badly. So I was paying more attention when someone new appeared on the dance scene. Her aunt brought her, this young woman who came in through the door, stiff yet elegant with a very long neck and white skin, her hair pulled back in a tight, tight ponytail, her white button-down shirt tucked tight into her jeans, wearing a borrowed pair of cowboy boots. Her aunt told me she had just graduated from college, the niece, Greta. She was a little lost, didn't have many friends in town. Her aunt thought the Cajun scene. This is a great place for her to just get her footing in the adult world. And she had taught her a few moves, which she got to practice, as we all watched, with the squirrel man. <laughs> Her composure was unruffled. Her hair was still 
smooth and sleek. Her frozen shell had not melted until one evening from out of the crowd came that hand. Jack <coughs> drew Greta onto the dance floor. He was about six inches shorter than her, but it didn't matter. He knew how to keep their center of gravity low and tight, and he glided with her across the floor for one dance, and then two, and then three dances. And at the end of that third dance, as the music reached a climax, he took her hand and he dipped himself backwards.